I'd like us to just take one quick second to say three words that are on the screen. And I want you to think about it like you're really excited, like your favorite ball club just scored or hit the home run or whatever, whatever it is, okay? On the count of three, one, two, three. Defense. Some of you need a better team. <laughs> I know it's early, but uh, wow. You know, you think about uh, today is the most important day in history. It's a day when time and calendars changed. It's, it's a time when the earth uh, received a Savior and uh, through his life and death and burial and resurrection, through what happened there, made us have the ability to be with Jesus forever and ever. Isn't that awesome? I mean, so let's one more time try this together. Now imagine you're on the best team. Let's say it, one, two, three. Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. We have been in a series uh, in the book of Psalms, so today not only are we celebrating uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that he's alive, but we're also going to wrap up um, this particular series. It's been very, uh, a very meaningful series, I know to me personally, and uh, it is, uh, so to get us kind of going, turn your attention to the screens as we hit our introductory video. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen. It's the first time that, uh, that a resurrection morning uh, I was uh, uh, privileged to speak about the 23rd Psalm. But it's a familiar passage, it's a familiar scripture. But I wanted to, uh, I, I think as I look, uh, as we planned six or eight weeks, ten weeks ago to do this, I didn't realize how uh, applicable it would be could, because the entire psalm is really meant to encourage us. You know, over the last few weeks or number of weeks that we, many of you have dealt with a wildfire, fire, loss, health issues. Uh, you've been uh, dealing maybe with a relational issue or two or maybe a loss of a loved one. A lot of that has happened these last few weeks. And some of us probably today are anxious. They're anxious or fearful or maybe even distressed about what's going on in our world around us and our future and what it might be. So this song can speak to us even today. It can refresh us. And so why not on a resurrection morning when uh, our Lord rose again, we should not talk about that. The first person who was helped by this psalm was David himself, and but picture David. I mean, he's he's uh, uh, he's writing. He's inspired by the Holy Spirit, and and yet, if you look at his life, it wasn't perfect. He was plagued with trouble. He had an aggravating uh, Saul uh, that, 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 he, that was, uh, he didn't really necessarily like David, right? There was opposition from the Philistines. There was pressure uh, that came from being a leader, especially with a divided nation. He had trouble in his own home. And I know nobody in this uh, room has ever had any of this uh, kind of thing, but people down the street have. And, and not only that, the sin that he dealt with that was in his heart, it, he, was just a, he was a man after God's own heart, but he was just like you and I dealing with life. And so he, as he's thinking uh, and he's facing all these things, he goes back to the early years when he was a shepherd boy. And he began to think about how him working his sheep, leading his sheep. He remembers what he did for the sheep, and some words began to come from him. Now remember, we're thinking about how, what, he might be, what might be going on when he penned this psalm. And he wrote, the Lord is my shepherd, because he's identifying with his 
early childhood. And he begins to think about what that means. You know, I cared for the sheep. They really didn't lack anything. I, yet he was a better shepherd than I could ever be. And so maybe if he's my shepherd, then I shall not want. When we begin to think about this scripture, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. And the words continue to come to David, and, and he begins to think about what it means uh, to, 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 to be a shepherd, and, and then he continues to write as if he's writing about himself. He said, the Lord leads me. We studied some of this over the last few weeks. He leads me to rest. He leads me to righteousness. The Lord restores me. You know, my heart can wander. I don't know if anybody in here has ever had a wandering heart, but your pastors has, you know, over the years. And he brings me back. It, and my spirit can get a little flatter. Uh, you know, it's like the less fizz in the pop bottle. Has anybody ever run out of fizz? Sizzle? Hello? Somebody, let me just give you a tip here. Pinch the person next to you. Because, you know, I got about four hours worth of material here. And, I've, and you know, I don't want to, yeah, anyway. But the Lord picks me up. He picked me up. And that's what David's saying. And the Lord brings me back. The, the Lord will never let me go just like a shepherd. And, and then I, I, he began to think about his life as a shepherd. He said, the Lord guards me. He, I've walked through some hard places, some dark valleys, some troubled times. And my shepherd was with me. You all have been through some of those times. Imagine doing it without the Lord at your side. And the Lord sustains me, he writes. The, the Philistines hated me. My colleagues, uh, some of them betrayed me. The members of my own household r rose up against me. And yet he stands with me and he strengthens me through tough, hard things. And this whole psalm is about a meditation. A meditation, it's, it's helping us to uh, be strengthened and it's bring good things about the shepherd does what he does for his sheep and i hope as we are here together today that we leave being reminded of what god is and who he is and what he does for and, and and david's strength there was, was faith was strengthened when he thought of the things of the lord and he started off with thou shalt not want right but he ended with what surely goodness and mercy Surely, goodness and mercy, we follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord together. This, this exercise of faith, when, when we do this, when we bring it to mind, and we realize all that's true in Christ, this resurrected Savior that we celebrate today. When you're tired, hello, does anybody, was anybody tired in the last seven days? How about drained? Anybody? You just know some people, right? You don't, yeah. How about discouraged or run down? When you're frustrated, what you do is you need to be refreshed. So bring to mind all that is yours in Christ Jesus, and your faith will be strengthened. Amen? As we look at this last verse, we see really the love of God that he has for you and me. First thing we see is the love that pursues and follows us. Think about it. Uh, and let me. And, there, and there's been a lot written about the 23rd Psalm, but we know that in many countries there are uh, shepherds, actual do life with, uh, and part of it is they have sheep dogs. And some of you that ever have had a sheep dog or, or sheep, you understand. Uh, but sheep dogs are this really. They're I think they're cool, but beautifully and highly motivated, highly trained, hardworking, intelligent creatures. It's amazing what they can do. And when you think of a shepherd leading a flock, he's actually out in front of the sheep and and. And the sheep follow but behind the sheep are these two sheep dogs and in, in, in this story and what david pins it and they're running back and forth and they're they're keeping the the flock close to the shepherd close to the shepherd the good shepherd that we've been studying has two sheep dogs and one's called goodness and the other one's called mercy goodness could also be a word grace grace and mercy Surely grace and mercy, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. See, grace and mercy are chasing us. See, remember the sheepdog of goodness, uh, uh, that, and especially when we think of grace as getting not what we deserve, but more than we deserve. And the sheepdog of mercy is not getting what we deserve. Aren't you glad of that? Because if we were pursued by the sheepdog of justice, getting all that we deserve, it would be not a good thing. But we can give thanks when we are in Christ. 
to know that he no longer chases us with judgment. That is all and everyone in this world, all have fallen short of the glory of God. That's what is coming for us unless we have Jesus Christ. But with him, he chases us with his mercy and goodness. It's great. The second thing that we find is the shepherd's love. It's, it's a love that welcomes. Everybody say welcome. I don't know why that wasn't in my notes. I was just thinking about not your welcome, but welcome. Your welcome is when you open the door and, and you say, welcome, come on in. Welcome, team. Welcome here, right? So welcome. It's a love that welcomes, and, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. These words you can understand it actually has a couple of meanings that I want to talk about. And in fact, if you have an ESV Bible, the footnote says for length of days. So it'd be like I dwell in the house of the Lord for uh, length of days. In Psalms 27, 4, we find David saying, one thing I've asked of the Lord that, I, that will I seek after is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Now, so many people think that means, so oh, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90 years, 100 years old. No, all your days. Now it's when you can pinch the neighbor next to you and say, this isn't going to heaven. Because if you're pinching something, it's not the spirit, Right? See, your flesh is not going to heaven, but the real you is. It's going to either go to heaven or hell, depending on your relationship with Jesus. And, and you think about how can you spend all your days with the shepherd, all your days of your life, because goodness, God's goodness and mercy, they're coming and, and, coming and, and keeping you close to the shepherd because the Lord, what? He leads you. But also the Lord restores you and he guards you and he sustains you. And when you have those things on board, you can walk with him and you can worship with him and you can love him and you can serve him. How often? All the days of your life. Hmm. But I think there was a second part that David was thinking about, this part that was beyond this side of heaven. Because I believe when you look at all the days of your life, he's thinking of what's life after, the afterlife. You'd think, well, why are we talking about afterlife when this is Resurrection Sunday? Because what happened over 2,000 years ago when Jesus defeated death, he passed it on to you and I as through the shed blood of Christ that death now no longer has sting. Death no longer ends it right here. Death no longer keeps us separated from him. He's looking at this after, the, the, the joy of eternity. Have you ever thought about the joy of eternity? How many have had the greatest joy you've ever had? Hey, can you remember back a time when you had great joy? Like first, the birth of your first grandbaby or first child? You won the, won the lotto? Oh, wait a minute, that's probably... When she said yes? Oh, see, see, come, some of you are awake. <laughs> when he asked. <laughs> yeah. The joy of eternity. And, and let me just say that being in the immediate presence of God. What will it be like? When you dwell in the house of the Lord, what, it's very different from this world. No, it, what will it be like? It's, it's a faith when faith turns to sight. It's when old battles will be over. It's when old wounds will be healed completely. We pray for healing on this side of, of heaven, and it can happen, but ultimately we are all healed when we leave this earth and step into his presence. Amen? Man, we should say, hello, does anybody go, amen, thank you, Jesus, for what? This is about him, not hearing a good sermon from me. I'm just trying to stay out of the way. But I'm trying to get us to reconnect with the, the amazing risen Savior and the joy that comes by knowing him. See, so he says, I'm going to wipe every and all tears from every eye. I'm gonna, we're going to see Christ in his glory. It's going to be beautiful and dwelling in the house of the Lord. I mean, think about how, how much that is forever and ever and ever. The greatest joys, experiencing heaven. And let me just say this, the experience in heaven will be different, yes, but your relationship on this side of heaven will remain the same. This is important. What your relationship now is will remain the same in eternity if you know Jesus Christ. I love this couple of glimpses here. John is given about heaven he writes in Revelation, he was exposed and given this vision. He says, they are before the throne and serving him day and night in his temple. They shall hunger no more. I'm jumping down a little bit. And, and neither will thirst no more. The sun shall not strike them, no, nor any by heat. It's a beautiful thing to be in the heavenlies. 
And then he tells us for the lamb, everybody say the lamb, because we've been talking about the lamb, the, the Lord is my shepherd and all those things and lambs. Is it, the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water. Does this sound much like the 23rd Psalm? Folks, there will be a glorious place for us. And, and the shepherd that we have read about, the shepherd that was crucified and died for your and I's behalf is the same shepherd that will be in heaven forever. <laughs> so how did that happen? Why, why will all of us be in heaven? Just because uh, you went to church? Hello? Oh, I know. You went to the right denomination. One of those ones that aren't fussing. Oh, you went to, you went, you just had your own church, right? It's all about you, right? No. It's because what Jesus did for all who believe. The main reason is the good shepherd Jesus loved us and he rescued us. Everybody say rescued. Man, to be rescued. Do you remember what you've been rescued from? How many of you have ever seen the song Amazing Grace? that saved a wretch like who? Man, you should point to yourself. Man, I always point to myself, and when I realized who I was and how empty I was and what I was trying to fill myself with from the earthly standpoint and never worked, and then when he came into my life, that, that difference, that is an amazing grace that God would give me that much wholeness. That's what we're talking about. And he rescued us. And that the Lamb of God, this is who we're talking about, he took away what? The sin of the Methodist, Baptist, President, no, of the world. Why did he do it? <laughs> How did he do it? Well, he took on our flesh. The good shepherd became one with the sheep. He came down in flesh and he came into our world and he shared our life and he became a lamb, the perfect lamb of God. It's because he loves you and he loves me amen i don't know if somebody in here needs to hear that there's somebody that loves you better than you love yourself his name's jesus and he was oppressed in isaiah it says he was oppressed and he was afflicted and yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb here we are back to the lamb that had been led to slaughter and and like a sheep that is before it shears and silent so he opened not his mouth and it goes on in in verse five it says and he was pierced for pierced for yours and my transgressions and he was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him do you realize how much he paid because he loves you and by his wounds we are healed see i think so many times i know at least my growing up and my understanding of the lord i, I really got the idea of the propitiation of sin that's a big word but as the blood of christ paid for my sin that man good my sins paid for it. but i forgot the comma that's not a period it says there's a comma and by his wounds i'm healed now we always i'm not talking about you know big big fancy you know in front of the camera kind of healing but how many have ever had a broken heart that he's brought healing to one of you two of you three of you this is an interactive service by the way We've all been there. How many have seen marriages that were on the way to dead be resurrected and new life brought back into them? Hello? Amen. He was pierced and he brought healing. And I gave my sheep eternal life. That's another thing you brought, and they never perish. Jesus was arrested, he was tried, he was crucified, he, he was buried. Death thought he, they had won. All, not just him, all of us. The devil wanted mankind to say, look, and by visual eyes, Jesus' death was it. it when, when Jesus said, is it finished, he, they just thought he'd just given up his breath, right? And the, the devil and Hades were doing a party. But guess what happened? God had another plan. Yeah. It was all part of the plan. I don't know if you've ever been in the bleachers. What happened in three days? Everybody started stomping their feet. This is kind of another, I'm just doing it to help you with the next part of your day, okay? Guess what happened? And the ground began to shake. And at the right time, what happened? This, hello? 
Where did the stomp and go? I think the first few rows are awake. You know, this is the 8 o'clock service, so I get it. I get it. About noon today, you go, you know, that, I, oh, yeah, hold on a minute. What happened? Imagine the earth, the power of the living God from heaven, reaching down from heaven and rolling back a stone and reaching in and breathing life into a dead body and Jesus was alive again. Imagine what would happen. That's who we're talking about on the third day. The Lamb of God became the Lion of Judah. He reigns today. I hope you realize that. And he wants to reign over anything in your life that you allow him to reign over. And when he reigns, you get all that comes with being part of the life of Jesus. You're a kid if you know Jesus. You're one of his kids. You're, you inherit, you receive all of the things that come from him. And then remember, not only eternal life, but in the midst of the throne, he'll be your shepherd. The days of living water on and on for eternity. And, and yet I, I have to put up some contrast here because so many people would say, yes, I understand there was a Jesus. And, you know, he's a great, pro all those things, but he's really, I haven't really decided I've needed him yet. But let me give you a contrast to this 23rd Psalm. If, you, if you've chosen to be your own shepherd, which many in the world have done, then, the, and, you know, kind of like the captain of your own ship, and, and then your reality would be more like this you ready i am my own shepherd and i will always want sin makes me restless it keeps me from lying down in green pastures it leads me beside still waters it ruins my soul sin leads me in the path of unrighteousness which i pursue for my own sake when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will have fear, for sin will be with me. Its guilt and its shame will haunt me. Sin prepares a table before me in the presence of my friends. It promises much but always disappoints, and my cup is always empty. Surely judgment and condemnation will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the lost forever. We all know somebody. I pray today that if that's you, that you realize what God wants. He wants to love you and to forgive you. Why stay there? The Son of God, the Good Shepherd, came to earth for you. Not them, not us, you. And he gave his life for you to make a way. He came to rescue from the judgment that was upon you. There's a number of young people in our student ministry that have put together a, a human video, a skit, and that's how we're going to close today. But I, And there's a song that you'll hear in the background. And in this song, you're going to hear about what God is offering today to all of us, and that's forgiveness and freedom and his love. And I can't think of a better way to be part of a resurrection service to be made aware once again. Hear me just share some of the lyrics with you real quick and then they'll come out. You're not hidden. There's never been a moment you, weren't, you were forgotten. You're not helpless, though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. There's no distance that cannot be covered. You're, you're not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I'm sending out an army to find you. In the middle of the darkest night, it's true, I will rescue you rescue you i will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight it's true i will rescue you i hear the whisper underneath your breath i hear your whisper you have nothing left i hear your sos your sos so if you'll pray with me that god would move today through all that has been shared and what we'll see those who need hope that hope would be restored those who may have broken heart or need healing, they allow the Holy Spirit to minister to them now. Amen?
are not hidden There's never been a moment You were forgotten You are not hopeless Though you have been broken Your innocence stolen I hear you whisper underneath your breath I hear your SOS, your SOS I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night It's true I will rescue you There is no distance That cannot be covered Over and over You are not defenseless I'll be your shelter I'll be your armor I hear you whisper under truth portrayed in a video that I look around this room and I know we all could see something that the Lord would illuminate in you or memory that he's healed you from or a potential that he wants to touch today and set you free Easter Resurrection Sunday 2023 can be life changing for you because of the name that's above every name his name is what Jesus Let's all stand. So we have people left and right that would love to pray with you before you leave, to stand with you against anything that you believe has been formed against you. I will be up here, Pastor Tyler and others, if you have questions about what it means to follow Jesus. But church, this is not just about Easter bunnies and colored eggs. It's about a Savior that's alive. It's about the call of his people to be the church. It's a celebration, yes, but it's a call to arms to go forth from here bearing the light of Jesus that can break chains, break addictions, 
heal hearts, restore marriage. Folks, you carry the answer. And who is it? His name is Jesus. You carry the answer. So may the hope that's in you be strong. May who you are in Christ be apparent. May you be courageous enough to save somebody from the bondage they may be walking in. And all you got to do is say, this is what Jesus is doing in me. Give them a testimony. Amen? Amen. If you've not said yes to Jesus, it's as simple as believing in your heart and professing through the mouth. And if you want more than that, come talk to me. But that is where it starts. And so, Lord, let's pray. Lord, now as we stand here, we would ask that you would finish the ministry that you began. He who began the good work in us is faithful. But Lord, we right now, I pray for each person here, will allow him to touch those places. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us the chains that you have taken off of us so we can worship you. Lord, thank you for the promise of breaking chains so we can worship you. And Lord, we do not have to leave here in bondage, but we can be free because of you. We speak Jesus over our household, Jesus from the mountaintops, Jesus over our families. We celebrate you today, and we pray this in your name. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Please come up if you would like to talk, but go out and be the light. Happy Resurrection Morning. Thank you.